Hi guys, my name is Amber and today I'm going to do a video on a personal story of mine, something that happened to me years ago that had a very profound impact on my life. Um, I'm also going to talk about the pitfalls of witchcraft in modern day society. Things that you may not even know are witchcraft and uh, the dangers of those. And um, I'm going to also talk to you about the phenomenon of paranormal activity. You may see it all over the TV and these uh, different shows. It may be happening to you. I don't know. Paranormal activity, not normal, not something that you see on a regular day and uh, something that you may think is of a somewhat of a spiritual side of uh, the earth, okay? Spiritual nature here, okay? And this might not even be uh, caused by witchcraft in your life. It could be caused by a number of um, other things. Uh, and I'm going to talk about those other things as well, what they could be. And finally, I'm going to uh, teach you about how to combat these things through spiritual warfare, okay? So um, just to give you a little background on me, um, I'm a Christian and I had a Christian background. I'll go more into detail with that later, but by no way, shape or form is this only a video for Christians. This is for everyone, any spiritual background, any religion, I don't care who you are, but I'm hoping that with my video, um, maybe that you'll gain some sort of insight or knowledge about this stuff in case you may, may ever need it, okay? I never thought I would, and I wish I had known this stuff. So stay tuned, okay? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start with my background, but just in case you see me looking down, it's, it's to my notes, okay? I don't want to forget anything. I don't want to leave out anything because this is so important. And uh, I may forget something, but if I do, if you have a question, please put them in the comment section below and I'll try to get the, um, a response to you as quickly as possible. So, uh, so to start out with my background, um, I was raised uh, going to an Assembly of God church, you know, so I had an understanding of God and I... Um, believe that I asked him into my heart and I was a Christian. And then when I got to my teenage years, out of a public Christ, or a private Christian school, I went to a public uh, high school, very good school, but uh, different from what I was used to. And that's where I got into my rebellious stage, okay? I wanted to try the ways of the world. I was so curious about everything. I had never seen this stuff or dealt with any of this stuff and it was so enticing to me. Okay, so that's where my backsliding started. Okay, um, it's been hard for me to put this video out, video out in particular because this has to deal with a moral issue um, of mine. And you know, it's hard to show anybody your weaknesses or your faults. And uh, I'll get to that in a little bit, but it's been very hard for me to put this out. Okay. So yes, I had the Christian upbringing, I fell away, and uh, that's how this all began, okay? And uh, and I wasn't even a young kid when this happened, I think I was like 25. Um, I was going in Barnes and Nobles, and I was going into like the paranormal section. I was basically all over the store, but I went into the section and I saw tarot cards. Tarot cards, those can't possibly work. What are they doing in this store? But it built my curiosity, okay? Picked my interest, okay? That was the first sign of trouble for me. So I bought these tarot cards just to see if they would even work. And I bought a book that would uh, give me the definitions of the cards, because there's a lot of them. And uh, <clears throat> I had no training in it, but of course it was very easy to get in Barnes, of, Barnes and Nobles of all places. You would think that it'd be a very safe place. And I'll get to you why. I'm saying that these are not safe based on my experience. So anyway, I took these home and I started using them. And uh, frighteningly, they were very accurate. I don't know how, but they were on the nose, okay? And so not only was I doing this for myself, you know, using them for myself or whatever day-to-day -day stuff I was going through, 
um, I started doing them for um, a couple of friends. And what I noticed is I started wanting to use them more and more frequently, almost like a drug addiction in a way. It was my form of addiction. And uh, don't know how that happened, but uh, they entice you to use them more and more and more. I'll get into this a little bit more in detail, but yes, that's how that all started. And uh, with my upbringing, somehow I got clarity of mind. You know, I started thinking to myself, Amber, what are you doing? You weren't raised for this. You weren't raised to do this. And I started thinking of scriptures that I've heard in previous, you know, sermons, probably as a child, as a kid being dragged to church. And, you know, I'm probably half asleep, but it stuck with me right when I needed it to. Okay. Somehow it popped into my head um, that basically witchcraft is of the devil. And if it's not of God, it's of the devil. Okay. So I was like, okay, you know, I, I have to get rid of these. This is not what I should be doing. I need to get rid of these, which I did, threw them in the dumpster that day. And I went inside and I asked, I prayed to God. I, I asked for repentance. I did a repentance prayer, prayed for forgiveness. And I turned away from that sin. I wasn't going to do it again. Literally that night, all hell broke loose for me in a very literal way, in a frightening way. Okay. Never have I ever had a night terror before that night. All started that night. If any of you uh, don't know what a night terror is, good, I'm glad for you. Very glad for you that you have not experienced this because it is horrid. It is horrible. And uh, so let me explain what a night terror feels like, okay? You're laying in your bed, asleep, sound asleep, minding your own. And all of a sudden, you are jolted awake. Something's wrong. So in your spirit, you know something is wrong here. And I would feel, coming down my hallway toward my bedroom, the presence of evil, okay? I don't know how to describe this other than saying every cell in my body, every fiber of my being knew that this was evil, pure evil. It's like it came off, exuded from it, okay? And when you feel this evil, you will feel a fear that you have never felt. It's like a primal fear, an innate fear built into you somehow. And uh, it is the most awful feeling. And when this fear washes over you, you are paralyzed. And I don't just mean paralyzed by fear or just like a quick reaction of, you know, deer in headlights. I mean, actually paralyzed. You cannot move any part of your body. You feel like uh, you cannot breathe. The only thing you can move are your eyes, okay? And as I'm laying there, I am sensing that there is a real being in my room, but I cannot see anything, okay? So something is amiss. So as I'm laying there, I feel the pound of what feels like a 400 pound man getting on top of me. And of course I have my sheet over me and it feels like he's pushing it into me around my neck. And it feels like it's going in around my body so tightly. And again, not allowing you to move. So you have this oppressive feeling over you. You can't move. And it feels like your life force is being sucked out of your body, and it is. And I'll get more to that in a little shortly, okay? So this goes on maybe for, I'm guessing three to five minutes, but it feels like an eternity, okay? When you're in that type of terror and physical pain, uh, the paralyzing feeling, it's awful. Um, it feels like it goes on forever, okay? So then it releases. And I look over at my clock and every single night terror from here on out, I look over at my clock. I don't know why I was, I felt like I needed to know what time it was 3 AM. Okay. So that's a little side note. You need to kind of keep in the back of your mind while I'm telling you this 3 AM. Okay. So this goes on 
for a good six to eight months, okay? And the frequency of it got more and more and more, okay? So it may have started out once a week or once every two weeks, and then it started increasing in frequent frequency, okay? So from one once every two weeks, then once once a week, once every half week, once every three days, once every two days, once once a day, okay? So this started happening every day, every night, early morning, 3 a.m., every early morning. And uh, while this was ensuing throughout that six to eight months, I started getting really concerned, like, what, what is happening to me? I'm healthy. Um, I don't have any health issues. What's going on? So, of course, I get on the computer and Google it, right? You Google things that you don't know anything about. And, of course, it comes up with something like, uh, this could be a sleep issue, sleep apnea, this. It's just your brain not turning off when your body turns off kind of kind of thing, Some, something of that nature. Okay, so totally normal. If you have problems, go to your doctor. I wasn't gonna go to my doctor over this. How embarrassing. I'm a, you know, 25 year old female, healthy in a, you know, decent career. And like, this shouldn't be happening to me. Like, I'll get through it. I'll get through it on my own. That was my thinking, on my own. It'll just pass over me, okay? And, um, excuse me. And as one might do when they're going through something scary like this or unbelievable, just not of the normal, so paranormal, <clears throat> you might try to explain it away. So you explain it away. Oh, it's probably just this. It's a health issue. So I thought it was a health issue the whole time. So you you give, give your explanations. It's just my brain not turning off. And, you know, maybe I've gone through some stress at work. I don't know. So you start explaining it away so it makes it more rational sounding to your mind so that you don't get so fearful, okay? Um, okay, I've gone over that. So anyway, so during this whole time, every one of these tax, attacks, I'm guessing was around three to five minutes, the longest times of my life. And after the attacks, I would, again, look to my, my alarm clock. I wanna see what time it is. So I was noticing they were around either 3 a.m., 3.05, or 3.15. Did not vary past that. So in the 3 a.m. mark, okay, that's when the attack would occur. And I would look after the attack. And some might wonder why I didn't just get up after that in fear and just go sit and watch TV with all the lights on in the house. <clears throat> and I can tell you, I can explain to you that if you get a spiritual attack like this, which I didn't know at the time, if you get a spiritual attack like this, it absolutely drains you, okay? It is draining. It is spiritual warfare, okay, that something's committing on you. This is not normal. It is not a medical condition. There might be some medical conditions that maybe mimic it, but consider that it might not be, okay? So I would just be drained, and I would fall asleep and not wake till morning because I'd be exhausted okay all right um finally after i was considerably worn down i mean i wasn't sleeping i was a 25 year old trying to go to bed with my lights on living on my own doing my own thing some uh, successful female doing my own thing and afraid to go to bed without my lights on However, this is a little tidbit of information. Don't know if it makes sense to any of you guys, but no matter how hard I would you know, try to sleep with the lights on, I just couldn't get comfortable. I couldn't rest. There was no sense of rest or peace, okay? So I would have to turn the lights off in order to even fall asleep, okay? Maybe important information, okay? So, at the time, I did not know it, okay? I, at the time, I did not know that these were demonic attacks. Full-on demon entering my room and oppressing me, okay? And I think that the lights going off was another way for them to put fear in me, okay? They like to attack, this thing would like to attack whenever I was at my most peaceful and vulnerable state. Didn't come at me in the day. 
But at night, that was a different picture, okay? So the lights would be off, single female or living alone female by myself. What is probably the worst fear that you can imagine as a woman living in an apartment complex in a, a not so great part of town and feeling like somebody's entering your room? It's awful. It's victimizing over and over and over again, okay? So just, just to put yourself in a female's point of mind, that uh, point of view that is going through these attacks. It's like the most vulnerable thing that you can ever experience, and I hope none of you ever have to. And uh, finally, by the end of the time of these, at these attacks in this apartment, I guess I had been worn down enough by this, and I'm going to start calling them, them demons, okay? This, what, these demon, this demon was a foot soldier of Satan, okay? He was just doing what he was instructed to do, uh, wearing me down, okay? So I had used tarot cards, and this is how it works. When you use stuff like tarot cards, Ouija boards, uh, I don't know what other, you know, witchcraft is out there, but it is not your own power. So these people that you see on TV that are getting this information from their spirit guides or whatever they want to call it, consider the source. If it's not from God, it is of the devil, okay? This is lower light being, okay? Very dangerous. So it's basically like they have a tether on you from them to you, so they're allowing to use a part of their power so that you get hooked on these things, okay? You think it's you and you think it's cool. Well, that's a cool party trick, okay? And some amazing things might happen. Uh, some amazing knowledge, uh, tricks, just little things. That's them. That's not on your own accord. That's not your power. That's them allowing you to have it. And they only let you have as much as they want to give, okay? Problem is the cost, okay? When you do things such as tarot cards, such as me, when I was a Christian and I did something that was willfully sinful and I did it over and over and over again, especially witchcraft in the Bible over and over again, it talks about the seriousness and the danger of witches, warlocks, um, mediums, okay? That's why they tell you to stay away from them, okay? That's why there was such a significant punishment for these people um, in Israel back in the biblical times because not only do they make a danger for themselves and others around them, they promote this stuff that, sorry, my chair's hitting the desk, that feels like a wildfire out into the community. So other people do this because, oh, it's fun, it's cool, oh, it's it's... It's nothing, it's a game, okay? It might look like a game on that store shelf. It is not a game, okay? So they tether you to them and the cost is your soul, okay? And they ultimately, and you'll see in a minute why I say this, they ultimately want you to die, okay? They may even take over your body like a meat puppet, okay? Because not only do they want you, which they already have, they want to destroy your family. Okay? They want to destroy your family. They are stealers. They are liars. They are destroyers. Okay? So they want to affect the people around you in your circle. Okay? They have the one, but they want them all. Okay? So that's their warfare that they do on us that you may not be privy to. You may not be aware of because most people are just doing their nine to five like I was, you know, back in the day. You're just doing your nine to five. You just see what's on the surface level. Another thing I'm gonna talk about later. You only see what's on the surface level. You don't see what's going on underneath. And there is a true war going on that you're not aware of because you just can't uh, see. You can't sense. Your senses don't pick these up, okay? So anyway, ultimately, they want you to hurt other people, destroy your family, destroy your friendships, um, and affect change in them as well, okay? And they don't care if you die. I think that's probably the end game with them, okay? They want to, some people, they want to take over your body, and I'm going to get to that in a second, to affect change within their circle, in their community. And just to give you a little information that might be 
even more plausible is I had a kind of high status job where I affected many people in my community, specifically criminal in nature, criminals, okay? So I believe that they could have been targeting me as well because of this, okay? So the end game is to that you die and that they're able to take your soul. It's to claim souls, okay? There's a, a war, both sides to claim souls, okay? One is for God, the other is for Satan. And don't think by any way, shape, or form that if you perform witchcraft or do the, you know, let's say Satanism, that you're going to get a, a great spot in hell uh, that they're going to value you. This is a ruse, okay? It's a trick, okay? So to move on, after this demon had worn me down to where I was not feeling well, hadn't slept in weeks, days, and if I would sleep, it'd be for an hour or two, was not feeling well, okay? So I felt like had that gone on much longer, I probably would have died, okay? It's that, that's how serious at this point it, it had become. And all the while, I'm trying to keep up with my nine to five. I'm trying to, you know, do my life and hang out with friends and hang out with family and trying to maintain a semblance of normal, normal while this terrifying stuff is happening, okay? That's when it no longer was that demon. The next one that came to me at that time, I recognized him as a supervisor demon. And this is why. Again, that same feeling, terror, paralysis. And mind you, I had even Googled ways to try to get out of the paralysis, thinking it was medical, okay? So I was able to move my pinky finger just a little bit, just to try to start breaking out of it, okay? But it would take so long to do it. Okay, don't know if it is my sheer will of trying to move one body part at a time or just this thing letting up, okay? So anyway, the supervisor demon comes in. Again, all the terrible feelings. However, as he's coming down my hallway, this is how I knew this one was different. He was much more powerful. So in the spirit, I was not really experiencing this in my body. Um, I'm sure if somebody was sleeping in the room, they would not have heard anything. But in the spirit, I heard this thing coming down the hallway and what it sounded like were thousands of trumpets blasting. So thousands of trumpets just blasting and blaring to the point where in my spirit, it felt like if this were in, in real life, in body, that it would have burst my eardrums. That's how loud it was. So just imagine the sheer terror of not only what I'm feeling, sensing, and now what I'm hearing, okay? Can't see anything, but I am hearing it and I am sensing it on every other level, except for smell, I guess. So thousands of trumpets blaring, okay? And then when he gets over me, he starts speaking to me. First time this has ever happened to me took the terror to a whole new level, okay? And listen to this. What he said is this. You are weak in the body of Christ. Let me in. And then he kept repeating, let me in, let me in, over and over again. So it was at this time, I knew full and well what I was dealing with. You know, as a child, you may sit in a church pew and just think, they're just trying to tell me this to make me behave and make me a good kid. And, or if this happened in, you know, during biblical times, you don't really see it now. I was wrong. And I'm not ashamed to admit I was wrong. Okay. So you are weak in the body of Christ. Let me in, let me in, let me in. And he kept repeating that. So I felt like he was trying to break me down. Like it was torture. It was spiritual torture. Okay. He was wanting to break me down to my weakest point so I would say yes. But I knew if I said yes, he would own me. My body would be his to do whatever he wanted to out in the, the, the community with my family, with my friends. And it would destroy not only me, but the others. But because I knew what he was, I was able 
to think back on those sermons that I had heard before. And before I get into that, I want to explain to you what his voice sounded like. Okay? It sounded like the loudest thunder you can imagine. To where, again, your ears feel like they would burst and start bleeding if this were a sound that you were actually experiencing in the body. Okay? But it was in spirit. Okay? So... When I heard him say these things, I realized what I had been dealing with this whole time was not a health issue. It was demonic attack, straight up demonic attack, demonic oppression, some people call it. But I was in the fight for my life. Okay. So now going back, somehow this happens. I don't know how it happens. Somehow a thought popped up in my head as I'm hearing this. And it goes back to something my mom taught me. Years ago, I was a little child laying in my room and um, I was afraid of my closet. I was just terrified, couldn't go to sleep. And she had told me something like, if you feel afraid, you plead the blood over it. I rebuke you in the blood of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Okay. And so I did this. And of course, I can't speak I'm paralyzed so I'm doing it in the spirit so you do not need to pray just with your mouth okay you can pray with your mind okay and you have to be very focused when you do this and intent okay so I did this I rebuke you in the name of Jesus I rebuke you in the blood of Jesus nothing happened did it again nothing happened and then amazingly something another thought a sermon, a memory of a sermon popped into my mind. Of course, this was back when I was a child. Why did I remember it now? And the sermon of the pastor said something to effect of, we do not battle evil entities. We do not battle demons of our own power. We battle them by his power. Okay, so the Lord's power. So this is nothing that you can do on your own again me myself and i i'm going to handle everything you cannot do this on your own you have to have faith and rely on god okay also and just a side note on this in the bible it says there is power in jesus's name and i remember this one also popped in my head there is power in jesus's name okay so i was it was like i was receiving battle plans in order to attack this supervisor, high-level de demon, okay? That's when I started my prayer. And if you are in a night terror, you are not going to more than likely remember those long prayers that you heard in church, you know, uh, that they teach you, and you do in redundancy, and you, you memorize and whatever. If you're in a high-stress situation like this, you need to keep it simple. And so that's what I did. That's, I did whatever I just could do. And the prayer I prayed is this. Jesus, please help me. And I kept repeating this. Jesus, please help me. Jesus, please help me. It was short and sweet. That's all I could remember. That's all I, I, I could go to. Okay. And it felt like a long time to me, but I probably said it three times. This demon fled. No trumpets, no thunder. The paralysis lifted off of me. He went. So it's like whatever that prayer that I was praying, Jesus, please help me. Either one, Jesus came and sent him away. Or two, he trembled and left. Okay. So I'm going to read to you about James. Uh, it's from James 2.19. Okay. And this applies. All right. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. Okay. So this is what he did. And he fled faster than you can imagine. Okay. He fled. And so after this, it was jarring. It was jolting. It, I was shaken to my core. 
But again, after this attack, this was probably the worst case of exhaustion I had. But again, I go back and I just, I'm able to just turn my head just enough to see the time, 3.15. And then I collapse from exhaustion and I wake up the next day. For a long time, it was quiet, okay? It was very quiet. However, you know, I had since moved in to another place, uh, my own house, year, this is years later, okay? Maybe 10 or 11, I'm talking for 10 or 11 years, it was quiet, okay? And then the attack started up again, okay? So you see, I think I angered him when I stood up to him, okay? So even though you may be able to, uh, you may see these TV shows where they're able to um, expel a demon from somebody or stop paranormal activity in somebody's house. Okay, demonic, hello, okay. Um, there's a correlation there. Um, even though you may think that you've gotten rid of them and you may have, you may not, not ever have a problem again, but there's the possibility that they will come and try to get you again. They'll just try a different, different time. And I don't know why they choose that time. Maybe there's a weakness going on. I don't know. Um, but they'll keep trying, okay? So I had subsequent attacks um, at my new place. And at this point, I was married. And, uh, you know, and uh, again, coming down the hallway, sensing evil. But this time, the paralysis, even though I felt the evilness and fear in my in my core from this thing, I felt fear, terror. I was able, I had this new ability now to get out of my bed and confront it as I'm praying, okay? Couldn't see anything, but I knew it was there. And again, I'd start praying and guess what? It would leave. Um, later on, I would, uh, you know, this happened maybe three more times like that where I uh, wouldn't be able to, two more times where I wouldn't be able to see it. And then maybe another time where I saw it as a shadow figure. So if you watch these shows or whatever, and they say shadow figure, big warning sign there. Okay. And again, you know, spiritual warfare, uh, warfare I'm doing against it. I'm praying in Jesus name, Jesus, please help me. Jesus, please help me. And I just kept it simple. Okay. Cause when you're in battle like that and in a terrifying situation, keep it simple. Okay. The last one, which I thought was actually kind of interesting and amusing. Again, I feel the evil wickedness permeating down my hallway, walking. You could feel it walking towards you. And then I look at the, um, at the, where, where the doorway and I see three smaller figures. They look like maybe no more than four feet tall staring at me from the doorway and they're just kind of peeking their head over at me. And then I see what I sensed was its um, leader. So a fourth one walk past them. So it brushes by their shoulders and walks up to my husband's side of the bed as if threatening me like he's going to hurt my husband. And I also sensed, okay, I'll, when you're doing spiritual warfare, that's gonna be a lot of feelings you get. And uh, when you get these red flags, Go with your gut instinct on it. Go with the instinct that's given to you by God, okay? These are warning signs, okay, to prepare you. And so I, I had the distinct impression that they were trying to, even though they looked like a shadow figure in small childlike form and skinny, like they were trying to show me that they were aliens, okay? So this is what demons will do. From what I gather, they will show themselves as people or beings that couldn't harm a fly. Or if you're a sci-fi buff like me, aliens, cool. You know, sign me up, where do I get to meet them? Well, guess what? They're demons, okay? That little girl that haunt, haunts these people on these TV shows, you know, they might show themselves as a small child because guess what? It endears your, themselves to you, okay? You feel like, oh, a child, how could that possibly be bad? 
Okay, how could that possibly be bad? All right. And then they rear their ugly face further and further and further. But the trick is you do not want this stuff to last very long, like in my case, because that just means they get rooted, attached to you for an even longer period of time, wearing you down, making them harder to expel, okay? Harder to get rid of, okay? So they were showing themselves, I was got the impression, like aliens, okay? Somewhat, you know, in popular culture, somewhat benign beings, smaller in stature, these, you know, these ones were. But I knew exactly what they were. I wasn't buying it. I knew exactly. So I got out of my bed and I'm, I'm watching the one that's near my husband. I thought he was going to do something to my husband. So I'm fearful that he's, he's up to something. So I'm, as I'm walking around my bed, I'm keeping my eye on him and I half get the feeling like this is a real intruder. Like he and I are going to go to blows. Like it, it's on. And of course my husband's asleep snoring. Anyway, so as I'm walking closer to this thing, all of a sudden, a veil starts lowering over my eyes. And as it's lowering, the parts that are, this part that is lowering, I'm not being able to see its head anymore, its body, its arms, its legs, you know. So it's going down like this. And as it's doing that, when it gets to the bottom, I can't see it at all. And I look back to the other three, they're gone. Can't see them either. As a dutiful wife, I go over and I start feeling around, you know, where this thing was because I want to make sure, you know, nothing's going to happen to my husband. Can't feel anything. So next, as a fearful mom, I run down the hallway worried that these things are going to attack my kids. Okay? So I'm opening each door, looking in, don't see anything. And I even go into each room and I'm feeling around to make sure that I can't feel or see anything. They're gone. And of course, as this veil was lowering over my eye, I was praying to Jesus. Jesus, please help me. Jesus, please help me. And I'm almost ready to do physical battle as well. <laughs> you know, because I'm, you know, you're, you just got jolted awake. And, you know, this is happening. Again, that vulnerability stage. You know, somebody's entered your house, taken you by surprise, and is in your room. That's the most vulnerable you can be. So anyway that happen okay and so after this I had had enough knowing that it came up to my husband's side of the bed and tried and threatened him or really threatened me that he was going to do something to him being a mom of two kids and you know have seen that almost happen to my husband I had to get serious about this so it was good that I was doing that spiritual warfare in that that moment but I also had my sister come over and we put anointing oil over as much as I could and we were praying as we were going dear Heavenly Father please protect our house please protect us everyone who enters our house our pets everyone and we're just going over and we're just trying to close whatever foothold whatever stronghold they they felt they had and so to get back to the tarot cards when you do things like that, it is witchcraft, tarot, Ouija boards. They're not games, okay? They may look like a game on that, that shelf. They're not games. I know they package them like that, okay? But not games. There is no light magic or good magic. There is no, it's just dark. It's just evil. It's just wickedness, okay? So that's a pitfall in thinking that you can do these things and stay safe. It's from the devil. It's a tool of the devil to attract souls to him and then to keep them tethered until they, they pass on. And then the worst happens, okay? And just a side note, um, later last year, you know, I like Ross and I was, you know, doing my thing that I like to do shopping. And I was passing by the children's section, literally right by the baby's section. And so there's an aisle, you know, with an end cap right next to this section. And of course it's with board games. So, you know, Candyland, any of the other board games with very bright, bold, brilliant colors that children are attracted to. And wouldn't you know, there's a box with a Ouija board. OK, 
okay? In bright, bold colors like it's Candyland, okay? Being advertised and marketed to children. So they're hoping that that mother, like me, going by this end cap, will buy that because it looks harmless. It's a game. It's in the game section. It's just a game. And that mother or dad that buys that for their children just to give them a fun time at Halloween party or whenever they just want to get rid of them and have them go with their friends or their, their uh, siblings, they don't realize the real danger that they're putting them in, okay? So last year, I'm in a Bible study with some really great women and um, it's expanding my knowledge. It's opening my eyes more than just regular church would. And I would recommend that to you if you want to gain knowledge and uh, further your relationship with God, okay? So that's really important. But uh, we were going through a Bible study and uh, one of the topics was, it was describing, I think it was the story of Moses on Mount Sinai. And, and if you look in the Bible, there are multiple uh, descriptions of what God's voice sounds like. And it all has to do with thunder. He thundered, it roar, you know, he roared, thunder, 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 okay? And so I guess during this time, the people were so afraid of the loudness and the, you know, maybe the shaking, I don't know, the thundering uh, voice that they would not go up there, but Moses would, okay? So I remember like hearing that description in the Bible study and all of a sudden a warning flag went off in my head, okay? Thunder, God has the voice of thunder, roaring loud thunder. And then my Bible study leader was saying that, you know, Satan doesn't have an original bone in his body. He mimics God, okay? And if you know the story about the fall of the angels, where God cast them down, you know that he was trying to be like God. He wanted the worship. He, it was a pride thing, okay? And it brought me back to that night where the supervisor demon used his voice and made it sound like thunder. He was mimicking God, okay? So who mimics God? Satan himself. So when I heard this, of course, I got kind of a sick pit in my stomach. That, that really happened and I didn't want to say anything, but um, I was a little distracted at that point because I knew that supervisor demon that I was dealing with one-on-one -on -one was Satan himself. He had come to close the deal. Maybe that other one was taking too long. I don't know. Maybe I was just ripe for the picking. He's going to close the deal. But even though in our society and right now I've focused on the demonic aspect of it, these low light beings, we have a merciful God. And you know what? These things are fearful of him. They run just like Satan did when he was trying to attack me. When I started praying for Jesus to help me, he scrammed. So, again, I am not proud of how I put myself in that danger. Whether it's naivety, ignorance, just plain sinfulness. I put myself in danger. And when you do stuff like that, it is witchcraft. It's not a game. Not a game for your kids. Not a game for you. Do not mess around with it. Okay? Because when you do that, let's say you're a Christian and you do that sin, that's a horrible sin. Okay? And so as a Christian, you have a protective covering that goes over you. For the most part, it, it, it protects you from these... Uh, evil attacks, okay? But if you do that, you give the enemy a legal right to be there, a legal right to do that to you, okay? They've gained entrance into you and they put a seed in you, okay? They're there. You've now let, let them in. That is uh, the armor that you had is no longer there and you are defenseless on your own. But you have a, a wonderful God who is merciful. The Bible says there is power in Jesus' name. So no matter who you are, what religion you are, if you're watching this, I want you to know, if you ever get in a bind like that, pray to Jesus, okay? That is the way you do spiritual warfare, okay? And this is the truth. This happened to me. 
it changed my life. It, it, it was jarring and it was awakening, okay? So I wanna do just a few um, scriptures and then I'll, um, I'll it's kind of getting long, getting long. But anyway, 1 Timothy 4.1, the spirit clearly says that in later times, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons, okay? Deceptive. We know Satan is a liar, okay? Demons are liars. They're deceiving. They'll show themselves as something that they're not in a way to gain your trust or your empathy. And that is a foothold into your home and into your, your heart. Okay. Okay. Do not give them these footholds. Break those footholds if you have made them. And if you get in a battle, pray in Jesus name. Okay. All right. And then two more verses. Again, very short verses. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You can have, you cannot have a part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. You cannot serve two masters. It's very clear about this in the Bible, okay? So if you're doing witchcraft, you're not of God, okay? You, if you at one point accepted him into your heart, you repented and accepted him, you're not of him at that point. So I want to make that very clear because I think in our society, um, this stuff is infiltrated so much that they make it seem benign and okay and safe. It's anything but. Okay. Excuse me. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. And this is the last one. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Okay? We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're not fighting one of our own. These things have power. You cannot fight them on your own. So that's where you um, use that spiritual warfare that I taught you, okay? And um, that was my testimony. That's something that was frightening that happened to me. I caused it by doing certain things that are pitfalls. Some people in our society do not know that those are wrong to do and for what reasons, okay? So I hope that whoever is watching this no matter your religion, you can be an atheist, but I hope that this gets you thinking, okay? And if um, if you are a Christian and you, you know, there are times where you're sitting in church and you get bored with the sermon, you don't think it applies to you, it doesn't really make any sense to you. There are times where our eyes are covered because we're just not ready to receive that yet, that message. But like with my case, when I needed it, it was there. In my head so you parents out there that are Christians and even ones that are not get your children into church prepare them because in their life just like in my life and many other people's lives at any point in their life something like this may happen to them um, you know there are other ways that demons can uh, oppress people it doesn't have to be through witchcraft. It could be, you know, maybe that person's going through depress depression, hard times in their lives, uh, divorce even. Um, I believe these things would definitely attack then. They attack you when you're vulnerable. And what a cowardly thing to do, okay? But ultimately, you know, you don't want to disrespect these things and not see them for what the power that they actually can have. have they do have, so... Ultimately, we have a higher authority, and he is ready to do battle on your behalf if you will just call upon his name. And so, um, if you do not have one of these, Holy Bible, I know they can be a little expensive at times. Uh, you can get an app on your phone, okay? Um, mine, uh, I have an iPhone, and I use the app uh, Uversion. So, it's a brown, it looks like the symbol of a brown Bible with um, Holy Bible on it, okay? Super helpful, okay, especially if you're outside right now, outdoor church, and you're lugging all of your chairs and your blankets and it's freezing. 
the last thing you really want to do is lug a Bible, but everybody has a phone nowadays and they're pretty small and it has everything on there. It has the different versions. So whatever version your church has or wh whichever one um, is easier for you to understand, I would definitely um, use that version and it has all of the versions on there. So I recommend, you know, recommend Bible, church, getting to know God, asking, you know, repenting of your sins, turning away of the sins and asking him into your heart. That's how you get, um, you know, through fellowship and through that. You're going to build yourself in the body of Christ. That's what the de Satan told me. You are weak in the body of Christ. You don't want to be weak. They pounce on the weak like a lion. Okay. All right. So anyway, I know this one is kind of long. Um, I just want to, I just hope this blesses any of you. doesn't matter who you are. I hope this brings blessings to you. And I hope that if you do get in a bind that, uh, of this nature, and I hope you don't, that you will remember this and you'll know how to use your spiritual warfare against them. Okay. And get yourself right with the Lord, get yourself stronger. Okay. And that's all I have. Thank you for watching.